We often think of our solar system as mostly empty space, populated by a few planets millions upon millions of kilometres apart, with some asteroids and comets sprinkled in between. But in reality, our home in space is a far more dynamic place than that. The Sun, as a giant nuclear fusion reactor, is constantly blasting the whole solar system with charged particles. Astronomers call this solar wind, and it comes from the Sun's corona, the uppermost atmosphere of the star. This plasma mostly consists of electrons, protons, and alpha particles, which are highly energetic and small enough to be able to damage molecules like our DNA, hitting our bodies like tiny subatomic bullets. We already touched in a previous video upon the concept of the heliosphere, the region of space where our sun's charged particles exert their influence. Today, we are going to dive further into what protects us from its dangers, the magnetic field. To explain magnetic fields, we first have to talk about where they come from. In physics, there are four fundamental forces and pillars of the rules of our universe. The strong force, the weak force, gravity and electromagnetism. The strong force keeps atoms nuclei together. The weak force governs radioactive decay. Gravity deals with mass interactions. And lastly, electromagnetism is all about charges. At the individual level, Protons have a positive charge, and electrons have a negative. They usually balance themselves inside an atom, the most stable ones having the same number of protons and electrons. However, while protons are tightly packed inside the atom's core, electrons orbit in a sea of probability around it. The way they do so is by filling stable layers around the nucleus. If a layer isn't filled, however, the atom becomes reactive. Its electrons on the outermost layer, called valence electrons, being able to interact with others in other atoms. Different atoms can share with, or even give electrons to each other, in order to fill these outer layers, thus forming chemical bonds. With sufficient energy or through specific patterns, it is possible to even remove electrons from these outer layers entirely, making the atoms ionized. Those electrons are now free to move and create a current. That's electromagnetism. In layman's terms, a magnetic field is nothing more than a field that passes through space and which makes a magnetic force move electric charges and magnetic dipoles. It is a form of interaction with the electromagnetic force. By having positively and negatively charged regions, it can create a flow of electrons following those differences in potential. From a tiny fridge magnet to our entire planet's magnetosphere, the physics remains the same. Our planet has many layers, and deep inside among them is our liquid metal outer core, with heat left over from Earth's very creation. Due to the extremely high temperatures and pressure, the iron in the outer core is able to exist in liquid form, with lots of free electrons to make it extremely conductive. With help from Earth's rotation and interactions within itself, this fluid is able to move in currents, creating what's called a dynamo effect. This movement is what creates our planet's magnetic field. It streams electrons from the core into far beyond the atmosphere and back again, basically turning the planet into a giant magnet. But beyond helping travellers all over history find their way with a compass, Earth's magnetosphere serves a far more important job, protecting the surface from high energy particles like cosmic rays and the solar wind by trapping and accelerating these particles to the poles. There they collide with gases in the upper atmosphere, creating beautiful auroras, Without this protection, the sheer strength of these high-energy particles would strip material from all over our atmosphere, essentially blowing it away into space. Astronomers long hypothesized this to have happened in other planets in our solar system, like Mars, that show signs of once being habitable, but losing that stability once its core solidified. Mars has all the hallmarks of a previously habitable planet. Long valleys caused by erosion, evidence of an ancient, much more dense atmosphere, to be able to sustain water in liquid form. 
However, astronomers believe once this geological activity subsided and the core froze, the planet lost its magnetic field, the only shield protecting it from the harmful solar wind. Over millennia, the Sun then proceeded to strip Mars of almost all of its atmosphere, decreasing the pressure so much that the oceans eventually simply evaporated into space, leaving behind a barren, cold and irradiated wasteland that was no longer capable of sustaining life. The moment it ceased to have a magnetosphere, Mars's habitable days were numbered, and since Mars missions would take a lot further and longer to complete, Future astronauts or colonies on the Red Planet will have to work around this lack of protection, likely building underground or coating structures with a layer of soil so the ground can absorb some of that extremely harmful radiation. One way we can minimise that in the near future would be to create a magnet and deploy it some distance in front of the planet, thus creating the effects of a proper magnetic field and once again shielding Mars from the solar wind. That, plus freeing gases from the planet's poles, and we might even be able to begin terraforming it. But if our close red neighbour is plagued with a lack of magnetic field, the next planet over is the complete opposite. Jupiter's magnetic field is about 20 times stronger than Earth's, and its magnetosphere is 20,000 times larger. It extends up to 7 million kilometres in the Sun's direction, and almost to the orbit of Saturn in the opposite direction, making it the largest and most powerful of any planetary magnetosphere in the solar system, and by volume the largest known continuous structure in the solar system, after the heliosphere. It's so powerful in fact, that our probes have to actively avoid it, purposely having highly elliptical and polar orbits to spend as much time away from it as possible. And while our planet's magnetic field is created by molten iron, Jupiter is so massive that the pressure in its core can compress even hydrogen into a metallic liquid, making it extremely conductive. The magnetic currents being so strong that the planet has a permanent aurora in its poles. All this strength could also cause problems for future manned missions, as the particles trapped by Jupiter's powerful magnetic field produce intense belts of radiation, similar to Earth's Van Allen belts but thousands of times stronger. This radiation interacts with the surfaces of Jupiter's largest moons, and markedly affects their chemical and physical properties. Those same particles also affect and are affected by the motions of the particles within Jupiter's tenuous planetary ring system. If humans want to visit the Jovian system, they'll have to develop new technologies capable of withstanding this hazardous environment, a far more daunting task than the ones to be able to visit Mars. Even incomprehensible giants like Jupiter are just a drop in the bucket of the cosmic ocean. Once we move from planets to stars, it's a whole different scale. Let's take the heliosphere as an example, which extends far beyond the orbits of all planets in our solar system, and took Voyager 1 almost 35 years travelling at more than 60,000 km per hour to escape. It's created by the Sun's magnetic field, plus the solar wind, and it's more than 850 times larger than Jupiter's magnetosphere. It's what simultaneously protects us from the majority of interstellar cosmic rays, and is also strong enough to strip planets of their atmospheres, requiring them to have their own magnetic fields. Our Sun, however, is a calm and small star. In astronomy it belongs in the G-type mean sequence class, commonly referred to as yellow dwarfs. Its influence can only be felt a mere 18 million kilometres from it, Massive, more dense stars can have magnetic fields several times stronger. But curiously, the crown of the most insane magnetic field in the universe goes to not a living star, but a dying one. Neutron stars are weird objects that combine relativity with quantum mechanics just by existing, and we'll definitely dive deeper into their story and composition in a later video. But for now it's sufficient to say, their magnetic fields range from millions to even trillions of times stronger than the Sun that's strong enough to erase a credit card from the distance of the Earth to the Moon. These extreme magnetic fields are produced by the mind-boggling amounts of pressure a neutron star is put under, as well as its quick rotation, ranging from once in a couple dozen seconds to several thousand times per second. If a neutron star would be any more extreme, it would turn into a black hole. And then it would behave completely differently, breaking several laws of known physics in the process. 
but that is a subject for another day. From tiny to interstellar, from harmless to hazardous, magnetic fields are an integral part of stellar and planetary development. Without one on our planet, it's safe to say we certainly wouldn't be here to learn about them. And as like everything else in the universe, they aren't as simple as they might seem at first glance. Thanks for joining us this week in Access Astronomy. We hope to see you here next week as we continue to explore our strange and vast universe.